Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a first look at the all new macOS Mojave which Apple just finished up announcing at their annual WWDC conference a few days ago. And what I wanted to do in this video was to just kind of show you guys what is all new in this operating system, what changes that you can expect if you decide to update to this one, the OS gets um, its final release in the fall. Um, I should mention that this is only a developer preview. This is not the final release of the OS by any means, and it's not even a public release. Um, Apple will be having a public beta program later this month, but this release is the very first one, so there are you know, going to be a few bugs, and um, some of the features are most likely not going to be finalized in this build because it is the very first one. But this will give us a good idea of what the uh, macOS Mojave is going to look like. Um, in the fall when it comes out. So we're just going to go ahead and start off with one of the biggest features that Apple has announced in macOS Mojave, and that is the introduction of a proper dark mode. And to access it, all you have to do is go into System Preferences right here, and go into the very first tab, General, and on the very top up here, you'll see we have these two new icons. We've got this one right here, which indicates for the regular mode, and this one, which indicates the dark mode. So to access it, all you have to do is just go ahead and click on this dark mode button, and you will see that it will go ahead and change into dark mode. Now, we have had the ability to um, change the macOS theme into a sort of dark mode for the past few uh, releases, I believe starting with Yosemite. But it would only change the color of the menu bar and the dock. It wouldn't change like all of the windows like this. And you may also notice that that background changed as well. It's called dynamic backgrounds. And basically what these are is um, a background that will change throughout the time of the day. So you see that when you have dark mode enabled, the background um, changes to a sort of night version of that background. And if I go back to this day version right here, you'll see that it goes back to the day version. And what's cool is it's not just two separate static images. This will actually dynamically change throughout the day. So if I go ahead and go into the time settings, and let's say, so right now I have the clock set for about 8 o'clock a.m. So if I go ahead and say change this to, you know, the afternoon, so let's go about 1, uh, we'll say about 2 p.m. If I go ahead and save this, you'll see that that background goes ahead and it changes to a sort of afternoon version of it. And if I go ahead and change it, you know, let's go up a few hours, let's go say to about uh, nine o'clock PM. Let me go ahead and save that. And you see now that it changes to that dark mode background, but we're not in dark mode, we are in the regular mode. So um, yeah, dynamically changing backgrounds, that's something that is really cool. And I don't believe that there are many um, other wallpapers they have in here that are supported. If I go ahead and go into desktop and screensaver, and so you see this one right here is, I believe, the only dynamic background. So you, you, know, you can see that we can choose these still ones. So we've got one uh, Mojave Day, Mojave Night, and these are all of the other backgrounds. We got High Sierra, uh, Sierra, Sierra 2, El Capitan. So we do have all the older backgrounds in here, but this one is the only dynamic one. And you see that it will ask you to enable location services so that it will uh, be able to tell what kind, uh, what time of, of uh, day that it is. Let's go ahead and, and switch back over into dark mode here, and I can show you just how thorough that dark mode is. So you'll see that the system preferences window goes totally black. It changes all of the uh, all of the text becomes white, and of all the new windows that I go ahead and open up. So if I go ahead and open up this Finder window, you'll see that it's kind of the same story here. So it doesn't just change the menu bar the wallpaper and the dock, it actually changes everything across the entire system. Okay, so for this next example, I had to get the desktop a little bit messy, uh, as you can see here, but this is actually a really cool feature as well. So if you ever are you know, working on a project and you don't really have everything organized, your desktop can look like this. I have seen very messy desktops. Um, you know, it, it just happens when you're trying to save something really fast and you know, it just goes to your desktop. So Apple has uh, implemented this really cool feature called Stacks. And basically what it does is with the click of a button, you can make this total mess look much more organized. So basically how it works is all you have to do is go ahead and right click anywhere on your desktop go down to group stacks by and you see you've got all these options here so just to start off we're going to go with kind so when i click on kind what it will do is as you can see it just goes ahead and groups all those you know that huge mess of a bunch of different documents into just these nice 
what are called stacks over here. So these three stacks. So you see we've got one for documents, one for images, and one for music. So if I go ahead and actually click on this documents one, it'll go ahead and expand kind of like it does down in the dock for like your downloads thing. It goes ahead and pops out like that. Kind of does that same thing here. So I can actually go uh, through and browse whatever document that I want. And once I find something, I just go ahead and open it up. So let's see this, um, you know, this very important uh, test document here. Um, so yeah, that's basically how it works. So it, it just kind of um, allows you to quickly organize all of those files on your desktop and it makes it look much cleaner with the click of a button. You also have a few different other options to group your stack. So let's say that you want to sort them by date created. You can do that and now it will have a stack dedicated to just stuff that you modified today which is pretty much all of these things and then the previous seven days you can see that it has uh, this youtube playbook it uh, you know put that into its own stack you can also do by tags so i don't have any of these items tagged so it's not going, going to show up but if you actually went ahead and tag these items um, you can go ahead and group them by that as well. So that's pretty awesome. So that is stacks. So next, let's go ahead and get into some Finder improvements. I'm sure everybody that uses the Mac knows what Finder is and they know how to use it. Well, Apple has made a few improvements to the Finder as well. The very first feature we're going to go ahead and take a look at is what's called the Gallery View. And what the Gallery View does is if I go ahead and uh, you know click on this option up here, what it does is it brings all of your documents into almost like something like CoverFlow. That's kind of what this reminds me of. So it kind of uh, looks like CoverFlow and it just allows you to go through and you know view these items, view um, a few different details about them. You can preview them. So all these different text documents are just copies of this very first one. So they all say the same thing, but you can do that like with this PDF here. I can go ahead and actually scroll through this entire PDF without, without having to actually open it up. What they've also done is they've brought a lot of improvements to Quick Look, which is when you go ahead and press space bar on something, um, you can go ahead and actually you know preview the, the document before you actually open it up. So what they've tried to do is add a lot of features to Quick Look so that you could make changes to this document without having to actually open it up. And one of those is what's called markup. So if I go ahead and click on this icon up here, what it will do is, is uh, you know, go ahead into the markup mode. And what I can do from here is actually draw on the document. I can actually go ahead and circle things, um, box things out. So let's say that I want to go ahead and just, you know, make a circle and circle this little description right here. I can go ahead and do that. And when I click done, it'll actually go ahead and save that document. So when I go ahead and get out of it, you can see that it's, you know, all the changes take effect immediately. So I just modify this document without even having to open it up. What's also cool is you can actually, so let's, let's go back into markup here. You, you can actually go ahead and add your signature to a document. And one of the demonstrations that they did at WWDC is they had a field trip permission slip form. And they basically went into the markup mode here. I'm not going to be able to demonstrate this because I don't have this set up. But basically what they did is they went in and Craig, the guy who was doing the, uh, the demo, clicked on here. And he was actually able to drag his signature out over to the signature part of the document that was asking you to go ahead and sign it. And he can go ahead and sign that document without even having to actually print it out and sign it and scan it back in and just do all that. So, And you don't even have to open up this document. You can do it right from Quick Look here, which is pretty awesome. Now let's go ahead and talk about applications. Apple actually added four new iOS applications, and they actually poured them over to Mojave so that Mac users are not going to be able to use those applications. So if I go ahead and go into the Finder here and go into Applications, and in here you may be able to see that we now have Home, we have News, we have Stocks, and we also have Voice Memos right here. All of these applications were previously only available on iOS, specifically the iPhone, but now they are brought over to the Mac, and the iPad is also getting Voice Memos and Stocks. Um, for the very first time as well, so that's pretty cool. Speaking of applications, Apple also redesigned the Mac App Store. So let me go ahead and open it up here and show you what that's all about. So this is it right here. This is the new App Store. And as you can see, it looks entirely different than the Mac App Store has looked for the past few years. They've, got, um, they've gotten rid of the header up here. They, they have kind of moved over to the sidebar here. They've made it look a lot more simplistic and it just kind of allows you to focus on the content and it still works as you can expect it to. So if I want to go ahead and take a look at Final Cut Pro right here, I can go ahead and go into that. It shows the price up here. Definitely um, iOS inspired. This honestly looks very, very similar 
to iOS with this rating um, you know thing here that looks very similar to iOS all this information down here so yeah they've definitely taken some inspiration from their own iOS app store redesign so yeah that is the newly designed Mac app store Another very small but welcome feature is Apple actually went ahead and improved the way you can take screenshots in Mojave. So if I go ahead and press Command, Shift, and 5, what we'll do is go ahead and bring up this little HUD menu down here with some very um, easy to access options. So I can go ahead and um, like you normally would, I can just go ahead and capture a selected portion. I can choose to capture the selected window. I can choose to capture the entire screen or I get uh, some shortcuts to do a actual video recording right here as well. I can go ahead and record the entire screen or record the selected portion. We also got some options right here as well, which can, you can actually set a timer, you can show or hide the mouse cursor, and you can choose where to save it to. When I actually go ahead and take a screenshot, what we'll do is actually pop up with this uh, little preview right down here in the bottom right, very similar to what iOS does. And I can go ahead and uh, click on that, and it will go ahead and open it up with Quick Look, and I can go ahead and use Markup to make modifications to it like I see fit. So that is the um, very nice improvements that have been done to screenshotting on the Mac OS. Now, naturally, there are a few features that unfortunately I'm not going to be able to demonstrate for you just because I don't have them set up. And one of those is Siri now works with HomeKit on the Mac, so I can actually just go ahead and if I had HomeKit um, you know, devices in my house that I could actually you know, demonstrate for you, you can basically just ask Siri from the Mac to turn on your lights, you know, change your thermostat, all of that good stuff. Apple's also um, updated FaceTime, and this is not just with the Mac, but with the iPhone and iPad as well. But you can actually now have group FaceTime calls with up to 32 people. So that's pretty awesome. That's been a feature that people have been wanting for a while because, you know, FaceTime, you can't do groups with it, but now you can. So that is basically it. That is a first look at Apple's newest version of the Mac OS. Again, that's called the Mac OS Mojave. Um, yes, I was not able to demonstrate everything in this video because it would just make the video way too long and I just really wanted to focus on the major features and the major improvements that are coming to the Mac this fall. So if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this in the near future. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.